What's going on in Baltimore? Because we know Philly's running away with the East, but let's see um, where Baltimore's <laughs> doing. Hold on. Oh, shit. I got to turn it up. All right. Here we go. After a number of shootings here in the Park Heights neighborhood over the past couple of days, police have identified one of the victims as 24-year-old Jaleel George. Those close to him say that he was an aspiring real estate mogul that may have been caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. I can't even begin to fathom in my wildest imagination how something like this could have happened outside of mistaken identity. Terry Uncle T. Williams, CEO of the Challenge to Change mentoring program and close friend of Jaleel George, telling 11 News the whole thing just doesn't make sense. Police say Wednesday, just before three in the afternoon, George was shot in the arm and head here on Oswego Avenue. He died at the scene. I could never see anything in him that would question whether or not he was into some sort of foul play. George was an up-and-coming real estate investor working with some of the top in his field. Williams says he would do tours of neighborhoods with him and says George wanted to make a difference in his community. He... So, <laughs> so no one finds it odd that this man has lived in this, in this city for how many years? And he still thinks there has to be some kind of rhyme or reason to why somebody gets killed? Like, that's just yeah. weird. I think, I think, though, processing it, like, He's probably in that state of shock because, you know, you go through what's the seven steps of this shit. He may be in the shock and denial. He may be in one of those phases where he's just like, because, like, listen, man, this brother right here was not like he not that guy, man. So you just wonder, you just like, listen, man, I get where you come from. I'm not I'm not denying where you come from, but. I mean, like, like remember that time we did a story a couple or maybe a month ago ago this white guy was in dc he was electrical contractor working on like one of these buildings in the projects working on electric wiring and the sun man just came up and killed him and they caught him on security camera and stuff whatnot and blah, blah, blah and it's like sometimes it's just like we just come through like the shadow of death like a shadow like a a, a, a just a ray of death, a death beam, and then we're gone. And people are left to pick up the pieces. You know what I'm saying? And they're confused, man. <laughs> it's that, and then and then it's also the Sun Man can be a chameleon, so he can be doing great things on one mm. hand with a, a certain group of people. And then he can be a totally different person other in up uh, with another group of people. And sometimes the negative group of people that he is with crosses over. And then the, the group of people that he's with when he's doing good, like what in the world? That's 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 not who he is. But yeah, it, it is who he is. Just not with you. Your your theory is that this guy may have been into some bullshit on this you know what i'm saying um especially in baltimore okay i, I you know i i'm not picking that up but hey man i'm open to it man i don't know let's let's see man i mean let, maybe the truth is in the the truth is in the pudding though so let's see he died at the scene i could never see anything in him that would question whether or not he was into some sort of foul play George was an up-and-coming real estate investor working with some of the top in his field. Williams says he would do tours of neighborhoods with him and says George wanted to make a difference in his community. He believes he was in Park Heights eyeing up his first property. This was his first home. This was his first and best man. Man, this was this young, bright, brilliant, young king, first property. So I'm almost sure he was back there analyzing, you know, the property, taking a good look at it. And, and he was probably. Oh, see, that's another thing, too. Like, who was this? We riding through some niggas that shadowed us last night and we coming back through their hood and ain't nobody outside because, you know, niggas ain't going to be outside because they know get back coming through. And we ride through, we scour on the streets, we riding the very block and we don't see nobody outside. And then we see this nigga, he not in a suit. He dressed like 
a homie. He he working on the house. He, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, there go one of the niggas right there. That could have been, you know what I'm saying? That as well. But so, usually in Baltimore, it's such a small city. They they Baltimore know faces. Not small. Baltimore is not small, Jack. Balt- c- c- coming from D.C., they say D.C. small. D.C. small for people who go to the Go-Go's. And everybody mm-hmm. go to the Go-Go and know each other from the club. But D.C. is not a small city. And I think Baltimore is the same way. Maybe if you're in that little house music and you go to the club or you fucking hang out in certain, you know, you'll, you. but Baltimore is huge. I've been, I was in Baltimore um, what, maybe a year or two ago. And I was, I was stunned by how big it was, by how vast the proper. And I'm not talking about the county, too. I'm just talking about Baltimore proper was. You know gotcha. what I mean? Because I was just going to ask, are you including the county as well? Yeah, no, I'm just talking about Baltimore proper. These places, I mean, I guess they're small if you compare them to fucking New York City. But, I mean, take New York City out of it. These places are not small, man. And you got some in everywhere. And listen, just everybody don't know everybody. Everybody don't know everybody in the city. And, and and if you were riding through and we're fucking looking for some ops and we're hunting and nobody's outside, we mad as shit. And then we see somebody, we just make a split, rush, sun man, rash decision. I don't know. It could. I'm not saying that that's what happened, but for him, for this guy to get shot, that's not his hood. The way he's saying it, the way the way this brother's explaining it, he never said, "Oh yeah, he was right in his own community." You know what I'm saying? Like this brother was probably in a neighborhood that he he was only there because the house he was investing in was there. And had he been a white man, nobody would have given it a second thought. Had he been an Ombrito, nobody would have given him a second look. But he's a son, man. He's milling around and shit. I mean, if the ops come through, they may mistaken him for now. I don't know. But I, we're gonna, I think the proof is going to come out. The truth is going to come out. Bright, brilliant, young king, first property. So I'm almost sure he was back there analyzing, you know, the property, taking a good look at it. And, and he was probably pretty pleased with what he seen. But then what he seen when he looked up. William says he has reached out to George's family and says the situation frustrates him greatly, seeing what could have been cut down senselessly. He showed me the possibilities of a young black man in Baltimore City striving and thriving for greatness and want to see his city beautified and friends say that there will be a vigil held this saturday from three to four at western tech to honor jaleel george for more information we have some links on our website wbaltv.com and on our mobile app in park heights i'm lowell melser wbal tv love now the other thing i will say too uh is i don't know if you remember the story where the father was building i think it was a fence in his backyard for his children to kind of um, keep them away from the riffraff. Do you, and he got ended up getting shot, and then the police ended up um, completing the fence. Do you remember that story? What city? In Baltimore. In Baltimore. Oh, Baltimore. Nah, man, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. So I was going to say that it could have been a thing of that as well, where, you know, this brother's, you know, or this son guy, man, is, you know, looking at properties or something and, you know, just as you always state, just that chance of coming to some son man like, yo, what, what the fuck is you doing or things like that. And then, the, you know, a, com- a you know, a, a disagreement yeah. comes in, but but and, and then shots and then somebody ends up getting murdered. But, yeah, there was this, um, an incident mm, maybe a year and a half or two where a father was building um a fence around his you know the property because you know properties are very you know small in baltimore but he was building a fence you know so his children could you know have some you know sense of peace and 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 tranquility and some sun men you know came up and and an argument sparked off and the man ended up the father ended up getting shot 
and then the Baltimore police ended up. Did he die? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I put it in yeah. the back chat, Ock. I put a YouTube on it in the back chat. Okay. Yeah. And, let's, um, let's, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Mm. Jaleel, he was never born to fit in. He was born to stand out the way he did. Nearly 150 people came together outside Western Tech Saturday. Photos of 24-year-old Jaleel George lined the lawn. And I just think back to that big grin and that big smile. The aspiring real estate mogul was gunned down Wednesday while walking through a potential investment property in Park Heights. <laughs> I mean... Called it. He was walking around looking for investment. Yeah, I mean, like it's it's really. Or that was his property. I didn't I didn't hear. No, this is this this is his first investment. Salute to Stunner, you. man. Um, this is this is this is his first inv first investment, man. Um, man, this stuff hurts, man. Um, this the, the, these these stories hurt your soul, man. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, cause right. like. It's like what I said the other day. The worst of us loves even randomly taking out those of us who are actually trying to be productive, trying to be citizens. And we just, whether by 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 accident or by conspiracy, um, they get us. Nobody <laughs> can climb out of the crab bucket, man. The, the crabs yeah. won't let the other crabs escape. Yeah, I don't. I don't even think it's a conspiracy. I just think it's you know, that's just what they programmed to be. You know, yeah, it's more like there's a whirlwind of death that surrounds the crabs that you know incidentally destroys other crabs around them. Yeah, this is. I mean, it, it's just when you see a brother like this, and you see those people that are out. Like when you, you can tell a lot by the people that are out. These don't look like janky hood rat people. All of them. They look like, you know, people that went to school with them and, you know, maybe college people that went to college with them. These people look relatively clean. They don't look, you know, busted and, you know, it, it looked like these some decent people that, that you know, they, they represent them well. Yeah. Um, It's just... <sighs> um, but again, it's... it's tight. Uh, and what? Ain't a balloon in sight. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's it just doesn't seem like that ghetto fied crowd. So that 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 kind of makes me think that maybe he was um you know what I mean maybe he wasn't like a booger, but you never know. Like you said, you never Yes, know. and that's the sad thing. You just never no. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh my god, man. Um this these these ones these ones bother me, man. Um, but let's go. Dose of 24-year-old Jaleel George lined the lawn. And I just think back to that big grin and that big smile. The aspiring real estate mogul was gunned down Wednesday while walking through a potential investment property in Park Heights. Friends say George was a man with a vision with a bright future ahead. He wanted to take his own path and get into real estate. And he started wholesaling with uh, Harmony, you know, flipping houses and just closed on his first deal. They say he constantly motivated others and dreamed of making Baltimore a better place. Friends hope to pick up where he left off. And you talked to me about your ambitions. You talked to me about how excited you was to complete your first flip. And then you're not going to get a chance to witness it. Local real estate investor Will Rogers says George was making a difference in Baltimore. And now he wants to see the city do the same by taking action to prevent the violence. We need to get these guns off the street. Oh, uh, God. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, he, well, he, that's close, right? We need to get the sun men yeah. off the street. Right. But we got to get these guns off the street is the equivalent to, um, in my opinion, I'm sorry that I wanted to defund the police. <laughs> right. 
Man, it's the best you're gonna get out of these fucking sun people. It, it, it's almost act like oh this piece of shit wouldn't have done what he did if it wasn't for the gun. He would have right. done what he does. Right, it's like, a piece of shit. The cops in Baltimore are fucking they getting like eight hundred legal guns off the street every month. You know what I'm saying? Rousting these fucking sun men and shit and these vice squads. Because, you know, the, the vice squads are back. These vice squads in these cities are fucking hitting these blocks hard. You seen the wire, how they ran up on those niggas on the block. They get guns off, you know, off, off the streets of Baltimore all the time. Like, it's not, that's not the cake, the problem. It's the sun men are fucking shooting people in the, the DAs and the prosecutors. The DA there is a sister. The mayor is a brother with a big ass afro. Well, the DS, she's out. She's she's about to be out. Mosby, okay, yes. Yeah, she's yeah, she's, she's she's gone. Yeah, um, she's she's still there, but you know she got voted out. Yeah, but the next thing ain't gonna be no um, different. I, uh, what did she yeah, have yeah, well, scandal, right? I hope I, I hope she's gonna be different, Mayo. But you know, I mean, I hope the new guy's gonna be. I forget his name, but it's a new guy. He's he's talking he different. Um, he won't. he won't be different, man. He wouldn't have gotten elected. In Baltimore, if he was different, you have to think he talked. He talked a different game, Ox. So we just gotta wait and see. Salute to my man TC, man. Um, TC, he says um, we appreciate your Rumble show. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, man. Um, salute to my man um, Elevate TN. He said, "What's happening, Captain?" Um, yeah, man. Salute to y'all. Um, coming through with the um, PayPal's and the Cash App. Salute to you guys, man. Um, yeah, man. Listen. Uh, I'm just a little sad about this one. I mean, let me just let it play. Prevent the violence. We need to get these guns off the street. Um, I am personally willing to put up $10,000 of my own money to start the gun buyback program back into the city. (laughs) You get a whole bunch of wooden fucking... um, Uh, Fucking guns and shit. Every gun they get for the... (laughs) A bunch of broke-ass single-shot shotguns. You think they're aware that, like, Everything that they suggest has been tried a thousand other times in every other city and indeed in Baltimore and has not worked really. And the person who brings back a gun is not the same type of person that's going to fucking shoot your fucking homeboy. That was Absolutely fucking, not. It's not the same person. It's somebody that's got Absolutely a bunch not. of old fucking wooden <laughs> guns lying around and they say, oh, it's a gun buy back shit. Let's go give me some money, man. Right from like, their veteran grandfather. Someone's- Someone's yeah. husband passes away and leaves a gun in the house, and the yeah. widow takes it down there. Some shit like that. It ain't no gangbangers. Yeah. Fuck no. Can, can so you what imagine what that would look like? I, that shit would be. I can't even imagine it. All these pieces of shit dudes lined up with their switches and their extendos oh and their God. lasers. Yeah, baby. I'm just trying to do my part for the community. Feel yeah. me here. We, we put 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 the guns down. And what hey, wicked. Oh, I'm what sorry, Rob. No, I was just gonna say, wicked. Another uh, come to quote unquote come to Jesus moment is the gun thing, and I was uh, oh, it's the, the issue is with the guns. It's too many guns. It's just too many guns. It did you know with with Ock and because Ock and Ock Nation. No, it's not the effing guns. It's the people who have the guns because right. gliders mm-hmm. have tons of guns and tons of ammunition, and they're not freaking shooting their the people that's around them with very the guns. Great point. Very great point. Period. In fact, nobody else is doing that. No, uh, no, no, no one else is doing that. And, and to your point, not only are, do they have a lot of guns, but they're also impoverished. So there goes that one with it. You know? Impoverished. Yeah. Hey, oh yeah, w- there's more, more poor gliders than, right. than some, yeah. man. And oh yeah. They're, oh they're, yeah. They're not like, they're, I mean, they're, I'm sure there's like a bunch of degenerates amongst them. No doubt about it. But they're not murdering each other. Oh, ton, tons of degenerates. Yeah, tons definitely. of them. Listen, I'm but they find- It's a bunch of drawn face, fucking ain't shit ass gliders up here, and like, and the women look like shit. And I'm telling you, man. But they are different. Like, they ain't shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, in a different type of way, they can argue with each other. You know how many times I've seen gliders argue. Like, I'm talking about public. They're out in the front yard arguing and shit, and then just walk away. 
And no I'm one's like, murdered. There's no way a son, son man could do that. Even some bitch ass son man. I'm talking about some son man that's not killers. Somebody would become a killer that day. Because it's like we just can't argue. You see, you see Gladys argue all the time, tell each other off, and he's no fucking, and, and they just walk away. It's just the darndest thing. One thing but, I've um, come to find is that the sound of an argument and a glider argument and a sun argument are totally different. Like you can you can tell what you're coming around the corner if you know. <laughs> energy. It's the energy. Yeah, there's a lot of when you hear sons arguing, um, you it's 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 definitely more aggressive and more less reason. The things that the things that the gliders are saying, they're like reasoning with each other, they're like appealing to each other's logic. With some men arguing, they're like you know constantly um, up in the ante and constantly essaying things, escalating. <laughs> right. Um, Facts. Yeah. Yo, but I, but me to be honest, the way the way I see this, I'm, I'm pro Second Amendment. I really am. But mm -hmm. what you just said about the Baltimore police taking guns out of the street, I support that because these guys cannot have guns because they're gonna shoot kids. Yeah, exactly. And, and just so one more raise easily a few hundred thousand. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say just one more thing. When gliders argue, there's no fear of someone's about to get murdered. When no. some people argue, it's like, oh, no, something is really bad. It's about to go down. Yeah, and Graham, back that's, to the city. You can feel it. I'm sure you that can I can feel it. A few hundred thousand dollars uh, from other investors to help do the same thing. Jaleel was a good kid, not involved in any street business, and this should have never happened to him. So far, there have been no arrests in the murder of Jaleel George. If you know anything, you're asked to call police or Metro Crime Stoppers. Live at Baltimore Police... The reason I think this is mistaken identity is because of a case that happened in Baltimore. Um, hold on. It happened in Baltimore not too long ago, about 10 months ago. Um, this case right here, um, I'm going to play um, of a Baltimore City Police Lieutenant was shot to death this week and now the reward for anyone with information that leads police to an arrest concerning his death is up to $18,000. WMER 2 News' Brittany Verner went back to the neighborhood where it happened today and Brittany Neighbors Day say they kind of feel like the crime is creeping a little bit closer and closer to their homes. Yeah, and detectives were passing out these Man. flyers today on that block where the shooting happened. And neighbors who live there said they would like to see their presence in the area a lot more. These police, they, they not doing that job. <laughs> these police is not doing their job. Right? A lot more. These police. God, I love it when they say police. They, they not doing their job out here. We don't get patrol up here. Ma'am, didn't you just say defund the police? <laughs> Did you just say defund the police? How are they supposed to get patrols up here with less police? Yeah. Neighbors like Christine Wright are furious after their block became a crime scene. Didn't hear no shots or nothing. James Blue III was shot to death Tuesday afternoon in the 1400 block of Walker Avenue. And I couldn't believe that somebody got shot on this block. Been living on Walker Avenue. He's a contractor. And this was a property that he was um, re renovating. Couldn't believe that somebody got shot on this block. Been living on Walker Avenue for 24 years. And this is the first episode we that I know of the killing. Wright says she was home when it happened, but had no idea what was going on until she stepped outside. Oh, I was shocked. I was really shocked. Other neighbors share the same sentiment. Oh, this is the guy. I never saw him before, but I thought it was a teenage guy. Because he was elderly there renovating, remodeling the house. He's not from there. Like I said, it's too close to home. It's real close to home. I know that. One neighbor off camera says her car was hit by a bullet just five minutes after she returned home. Wright says it's why they want to see a larger presence from police. More patrol up and down Walker Avenue. I feel sorry for that family. I pray for that family. But this killing in Baltimore needs to stop. And we need help. We need help. That reward is now up to eighteen thousand. Okay, so that's that's what happened. Now let's let me take you to the update.
Well, in another story, we are learning more tonight about the possible motive in the murder of a Baltimore police lieutenant's husband. Yesterday, we told you about concerns the teenage suspect should not have been out on the streets because of two open warrants linked to him. WJZ investigator Mike Kelvin joins us live now from police headquarters with the latest. Mike? Vic, Denise, officially police are tight-lipped about a motive. But tonight, sources are shedding new light onto why this killing happened. The male shot in a black vehicle. Damn. Going back to an 09 Honda. Registered yeah, to he a... rolled up and that did, he, 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 he killed that guy. Like, it wasn't like he just shot at him. He, yeah. he assassinated that guy. Yeah, he wanted him dead. Yeah. But James Edward Blue the third. Why would someone want to kill James Blue? The respected father of three was shot over and over again at close range as he waited for an appliance delivery outside a home he'd recently bought as a fixer-upper. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying now, WP? I do, but at the same time, uh, why would somebody just run up on this dude and at a close range? It, it's it's always it's always. I, I hear you, bro. Are you because, but it's always, you just never know what the sun man is doing in his other life. I got Didn't you. we have a contractor killed sitting in the, in the yard waiting to, to, to get started there? Yeah, that's just him. three months ago? That's him. Look yeah. at that oh. crime scene, though. I mean, I, I mean, I think about it. Close I mean, think range. about it. We, we, we're talking about. Um, Emptied the clip in his face. Right. That's personal. See, well, have, not really. Have, were these properties foreclosures? Maybe. There's there's no. something more to this. It might mayor. be former occupants. There's no, something more, you, mayor. There's no, something no. more to this. Listen, listen. You get no, killed by a sixteen year old. You get killed by a sixteen year old Baltimore thug. This it it, it, it doesn't have to make sense. Um, a oh, sixteen facts. year old Baltimore thug. It's not like he got killed by a grown man. He got killed by a fucking little fucking hoodlum appliance delivery outside a home he'd recently bought as a fixer-upper. Police had already ruled out that his wife's job as a lieutenant in BPD Internal Affairs was behind the killing. Now, multiple sources tell WJZ this is a case of mistaken identity, that Blue was killed because the suspect was suspicious of why he was just sitting in his car talking on his phone for so long when Blue was only... <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yikes. The suspect probably thought he was a cop. Staking out his house or something. Jeez. No, nah, if he thought he was a cop, he wouldn't have. Um, he wouldn't yeah. have shot him. Barely but, thought about it at all. Probably just walked yeah, up and saw an opportunity to rob. Fuck away if he thought it was a cop. But he said, "Listen to what they said." I mean, yeah, they, yep. they investigated. They they talked to the guy. They talked to the team. They mm. talked to people who people close to the close to the situation. Mm. And this is what they came up with. So I mean, tell WJZ. This is a case of mistaken identity. That Blue was killed because the suspect was suspicious of why he was just sitting in his car talking on his phone for so long when Blue was only waiting for a refrigerator to be delivered. We're still working. To <laughs> Got you. Right. So, like, I know you want to, like, you can't believe it. You're like, nah, I got to be. Yeah. The team had to, you know, be like uh, the contractor bid it. He, the, the 16 year old thug bid it on the house and that guy won it over. No. It's not that deep. Oh, so let me let me ask you this. Can all I ask you this? Because huh? all of these shells, because he was sitting in his car too long on the phone. Yeah. Think about it. If you're if that's your hood, and you come up and say something to the nigga, and he don't say the and think about it. All right. Let me let me let me let me. Uh, say ammo's this. expensive. You got to be more yeah. more. Uh, no, nah, yeah. no, I, 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 everything you're saying makes sense. No, everything you're saying makes let me, sense. Let me, let me talk to um, let me talk to uh, Stunner. Stunner, you're sitting in your car, right? You're on your phone. I roll up, I say something to you. Who the fuck is you, cuz? Stunner, and if you were some man, and you if you were some man, and you and you're not man, armed, and you're not, yes, yes, you're 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 dead, yeah, you're you're done for. So it don't have to be necessarily like it could have been a a, a a brief exchange, right? Like you know what I'm saying? That, that if, if even that, if even that with the sun, if even that, right, right. Yeah. Now, I, like I said, I, I believe me, I, I'm always standing on. It don't have to have no rhyme or reason. <laughs> it don't have to have no rhyme or reason, and uh, all you got to do is be in proximity. Exactly. Of some people. 
and it can yeah. happen to you. Chance encounter. Zero to one hundred, real quick. This guy was waiting. He was sitting in his car. He was being watched. He didn't know he was being watched by some local homie. And it got. You also have to remember these guys have beef. These little sun teens have people shooting at them all the time. They just shot at some other people. They're on their block. They're in their hood. They don't know you because you're not from there. It's not like you're right. one of the fucking people that lives in the neighborhood. Right. Don't they know that car. That's a new him. car. Yeah. Right. They don't know They're the anticipating it. <laughs> that, that's a new car. Talking on the fucking phone. And they like, oh, shit, man, that could be the niggas we shot at. One of the fucking hundreds, <laughs> dozens of niggas we shot at. The, 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 whatever course or whatever. He's or he could be with them scouting us out or getting ready to, to call them in on us. Yeah, he's yes. 16. He's 16. He's a fucking hothead. And he just goes up and either sprays the car, shoots the guy dead, or goes up in this and, and questions him in a brief exchange and then leaves the gunfire. If this guy's wife is a cop, I'm sure this guy carries. Bears was behind the killing. Now, multiple sources tell WJZ this is a case of mistaken identity that Blue was killed because the suspect was suspicious of why he was just sitting in his car talking on his phone for so long when Blue was only waiting for a refrigerator to be delivered. We're still working to confirm the details, and police are not commenting on that alleged motive. They did make a quick arrest in the case. 18-year-old Mervo high student Siahu Kargbo, who's been charged. Well, there go your brother, Osa. Osa, your little your brother, man. Oh, Lord. Damn, oh, shit, that's my cousin the whole time and shit. That's my cousin. <laughs> Actually, kind of look like you, Op. Uh, <laughs> All right, they got the same hairstyle in there. <laughs> young Op right there. What do you think about this, though, Osa, man? Well, yeah. you, you Baltimore. You, 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 you know Baltimore. Yeah, no, nah, I mean... I think it is the way that it's coming out. He just he looked hot sitting in the car just like that. He could be any it don't matter. It, it ain't that deep. Yeah, it don't he's sitting in the car. That's hot. You're not from around there. Nobody's seen your car before. And they and, and when it comes to like your ops, you really right. just looking for any mm-hmm. sun man. Right. They probably not, they, they definitely into it with somebody. Yeah, but it's like he don't gotta be he just got to be a sun man like that's it and that's it like, he just all <laughs> yeah. like it doesn't have to be it's not deep at all it would be nice if there was some rhyme or reason yeah it would be nice and and i know what the i think that was uh wp who was saying like brothers do be leading double lives like i know we'd be watching these stories sometimes and we'll see like the old lady she'd be like he was such a good kid and we'd be thinking she's stupid mm-hmm. because it's like obvious he just like nah yeah. if that old lady the only thing she's ever seen him do is help her with her groceries. Mm. Why would she think anything else of him? Right. Yo, he's also, in- you said no rhyme or reason. Can you imagine being a detective on this case? Like, where the fuck do you start? Nah, they, they seen this shit. Yeah, they seen this shit all the time. They, mm. they, that's why the, that's why the murder, they don't solve shit. I mean, I'm going to be honest. They solved this one, though. Yeah, this they got a quick arrest. Oh, oh sh- never mind. Yeah, I, go. You go to Mervo and everything. It's a yeah. big high school too. <laughs> yeah, let's listen. Listen, man. Um, this is this is what I was talking about. Did you see the first case also with a son man, the real estate agent? Yeah, yeah, that, that was sad. Yeah. You're like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it don't I, I, I just think that like you're a son man, you're in another neighborhood. Cause when you're a real estate agent, I we used to see white guys coming in our neighborhood all the time. Like, remember when the, they was giving away all those arms, those um adjusted rate mortgages oh, back yeah. in the earth the first housing boom the first yeah. bubble 2000 like the early year no even though no, no the one before that the one like two the, 2003 or something like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like i mean that was when it burst in eight. Eight. yeah that, yeah, that yeah. first one that burst yeah when it was all you'd always see white guys in suits with like clipboards looking around the, your hood you'd be like who the fuck is that you right, know what I'm saying? but right. you never was thought nothing you knew it was you and then you'd be like oh that's some dude that's yeah. just some dude like fucking looking at a house. But you yeah. see a bunch of amigos, you know, standing around, fucking, you know, waiting to get to get to work and shit. You never thought about it. But I could just imagine a son mm. man. Yeah. We would be like, oh the fuck is Right. <laughs> you know Yo, he's been sitting in that car way too long, man. <laughs> hey, such and said, hey, go check him out. That makes yeah. sense, like. 
It's so nice to live in this like child uh, African soldier world in African America now. Yo, that that's that white that's a white privilege in in a sense, right? Ike? Yeah, that's definitely white privilege. Yeah, definitely, because you know you're not. They don't see you. It's kind of like me in a, a Latino neighborhood. Like if I went to fucking Langley Park, and no, the motherfuckers wouldn't. Nobody looks at me twice when I'm in Langley Park. Right. Unless you're up to no good, but other than that, but I ain't up to no good though. Through, <laughs> to do good. But if I was walking through there, it's doing the, the, the game banging. Right 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 yeah, they would. They would. They would fucking be looking at you funny and shit. Yeah, the game banging, and they would look at me like who? They probably, yeah. probably gonna come shoot at us. Yeah, so it's like it's like it's just sitting it's, in it's, cars is dangerous in the hood. Yeah, man, it's 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 a listen, man. This is this this illuminates more. This sheds more light on that first case. That's all I wanted to do. Charged with murder. The male wearing khaki pants, possibly a school uniform. Detectives. He track. killed him in his school uniform. He. Argo, who's been charged with murder. The male wearing khaki pants, possibly a school uniform. Detectives tracked mm. the suspect's movement, uh, which led them to a great piece of evidence, which helped them break through. The victim's son was on the phone with him at the time of the killing. Mm. He later wrote about those terrifying moments in a tribute to his father on GoFundMe. You didn't deserve to be murdered in broad daylight waiting for a refrigerator. You were minding your business when you were mistakenly identified a street over from your mother's house and murdered. I heard. Damn. Wow. Wow. So the son was on the phone. So that 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 son knows like what the conversation was about. So the guy must have came and said, you know, accused him of being somebody. Right. The guy's like, hold on, I ain't so and so. He should have drew right there. See, this is the thing I talk about. You can't compete because no. you have to draw. Yes right then yes. and, and and then a lot of people like mossy and god bless mossy that talk that two-way stuff they get into a little interaction with the son man and they ain't drawing first they not whipping out and busting his kid right and if you draw right then you, that guy I'll may say, back off because he's like, like oh i don't want to deal with the guy with a gun already out i when i go pick up some of my players because you know i coach basketball right Oh, yeah. So when I go to go pick up some of my players in the hood, the um the blicky's on the lap, man. It's mm. on the lap, and don't make me wait more than fifteen to twenty seconds <laughs> for you to come out, or I'm been I'm been in the block. I'm not just sitting out in front of your crib. Like I, I'm shocked that this dude would even pull that move. Like his mom lived on the on the other block. He should have known. Like he, mm-hmm. I, like like also said that was hot. What he was doing was hot. It was inviting a problem. Yeah, I mean, well, but not yeah, to blame but... him, not to blame him because that shit's no, not yeah, yeah, happened to him, yeah, yeah, but it was I'll... hot. Nah, but to say sometimes it's broad though, daylight, geez. Yeah, that's what I'm about to say. Sometimes though, it's broad daylight, and you'd be mm-hmm. like, "All right, it's it's business hours. Like, it's cool. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, all right. but still, Osa, Osa, come on, man. No, but here's Jeez. the thing too. Like, you're you're on the guy, you're on the phone with the guy. You're like, "Hey, I need the refrigerator." And he's like, "Oh, I, I'm 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 he, you know, how, how you do? Oh, I'm five, five minutes away, right." And then you're like, I'm gonna I'm be and he's like, oh, just come outside. And then you're like, all right, I'm gonna be waiting outside in my car. And he, he when he said he's five minutes away, he was still on the fucking highway. And he, and, and then you, you know, you might call him back, like, where you at? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'll am i be there in two minutes. And then the two minutes turned to 20 minutes, and you've been sitting in the fucking car. And you're not thinking, like, oh, I'm in a fucking gang neighborhood and some thug is gonna right. come up and shoot me. You're right. just sitting there fucking negotiating when the guy's gonna fucking be plus his Plus, his mom live on the street over, so he's already got a familiarity. Yeah, it's not he's like familiar. he's in the other side of town, he ain't never been before. So it's, yeah. it's not, he wasn't loafing that bad. <laughs> I what do you say should have known better then? No, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, 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 I think, nothing he could have done. Yeah, it's just that, nothing he could have done. It right? just it just it just speaks volumes of the stand, man. Jeez. Hell yeah. That's the yeah, the That's stand terrible. Like that. That's terrible. And and Ak, your point is made with this story, bro. There's nothing he could do. It just, just like it just happened. It's like it's kind of like a bird shits on you. I've I've been shadowed by a bird. <laughs> Like damn, was not my car, but me. And I was like, damn. damn, like this shit really happens. Like I didn't I never thought it could happen. And it just happened. Like it just it just happens. Tribute to his father on GoFundMe. You didn't deserve to be murdered in broad daylight waiting for a refrigerator. You were minding your business when you were mistakenly identified a street over from your mother's house and murdered. 
I heard 20 shots on the phone, but I couldn't believe that they were at you. Last week, I spoke to a neighbor who rushed to comfort his dad. Just imagine, you know, hearing shots and just saying, Dad, 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 and nobody's speaking in return. No bullshit. I can't even imagine. I can't, I cannot imagine. As for those open warrants, one was issued December 28th in Baltimore City, allegedly for discharging a firearm. It was never served. The other was for his home. Baltimore County Police had linked him to an armed robbery. We're looking for evidence. Well, that wasn't served. <laughs> so two warrants never served. He had two warrants that were never served. One for discharging fire, one for um, a robbery. Marilyn Mosby. And then he goes on to kill that guy. Country's so rough on the sun, then, man. No, yep. it's not fair. They defunded man. them police to deliver warrants, too. Yeah, Mar Marilyn Bosby. We 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 not we not we not dealing with crime. Yeah. So it looks like um I think I think Baltimore is 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 like yeah, th these stories are so sad and like I mean it's just sad, man. Like see these brothers this program contains and it's not like one. If it was just one, you know, and you could say something that's twice this year. That that particular story, a sudden man, realtor, at at a property, <laughs> this is stuff just come up and I mean body and shit. Twenty that's shots. A, that's all. That's a big bowl of sad chief. Um, and then his son on the phone. You can't make this shit up. Here's 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 a here's Bad. a story about the neighborhood. Here's the here's the neighborhood. Let's 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 see what kind of neighborhood. The first guy got killed. In. Not the oh, not Park the guy Heights. who Oh God! Oh yeah, you know about that. Yeah, Park Heights oh, is yeah. live. Park Heights is live. <laughs> yeah, I mean live. that's Northwest. Mayor Scott promised to reduce the deadly violence while he was campaigning, saying homicides would drop by 15 percent each year. Today, two years after he was sworn in, the crime crisis rages on. We have live team coverage of the bloodshed, starting with Fox 45's Jeff Abel and a look at what the mayor's done about crime during his time in office so far. Jeff? Well, despite some bold promises, there are questions tonight whether the mayor's crime plan is really an effective plan. In many corners of the city, you'll be hard-pressed to find anyone convinced the streets are growing safer. Man, I have not talked to anybody in this city that says they feel a little bit safer. And their true allegiance. It was two years ago today when Baltimore welcomed a new mayor who brought a whole new round of promises. Look how crazy they look, those masks on. Make sure you hit the <laughs> PayPal, Cash App, Super Chat. Support the channel, guys. PayPal, Cash App, Super Chat. Support the channel. Two years yeah, ago today but they won't when vote Baltimore for welcomed a new yeah, new mayor no. who brought a whole new round of promises. I will aim to reduce homicides by 15% each year in my term, getting us below 300 homicides in my first year. But by the time the mayor had settled into office, his bold promises had begun to fade. Homicides have consistently soared, not below, but above the 300 mark, both years of the mayor <laughs> Scott's administration. By the end of the summer, violent crime had increased 15% compared to the year before. At what point does it become clear to us that it is not working? This summer, city council members demanded a different crime plan, but Mayor Scott pressed on, often dodging questions. We ask you just a question. Uh, uh, yeah, just a quick moment. Mayor Scott, how do you plan to delineate? The mayor's five-year crime plan expands community violence reduction groups like Safe Streets and expands the war on ill- uh, Three of these guys were murdered last year. Three mm -hmm. of them. Three of them. And because they were all, because uh, all of them were still out doing their thing. You know, you know about those cases? Yes, all of them. Okay. And then, and also, also, just a personal question: How did your man's hair grow that much so fast? <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> oh. uh, hey, hey, real quick, would you say the silhouettes on this Safe Street poster? Do these really look like Sun to you? Yeah. Those yeah. Those, those, those. Yeah. It's got the Baltimore, Baltimore, guns, Baltimore so Oreo colors. We are talking about oh, okay. a, a disease of violence that has existed in Baltimore for over 50 years. And the people of Baltimore want it to be handled the right way. And they also understand that it's bigger than the police department. Clearly, there's nobody connected to that office 
to know what they're doing. Community activist Kenji Scott believes the problem begins with the department's top brass and the city cannot afford two more years of business as usual. Why Brandon won't fire him, I do not know. But clearly, we need a new coach. We need somebody in that police department that know what they're doing. People are dying every He's day. He's the police department. Wow. This is a, I, I can't believe... This is like the Twilight Zone. Yep. Well, you know his five-year plan, right? And nah. what, what, when, when that die. five years, when that five years is done, what he will come out and say, "Well, we didn't have enough money. We didn't put enough money into those programs over that five years." No oh, God. He yeah, the programs that. just failed. Um, salute the deluxe. Two four seven, the real MVP, aka Cal Ripken, coming through for the thousand straight night. Salute to you, bro. This yeah, but Mayo, I'm sorry. I'll... This is this is my point. Like they're blaming the police department when the police are making the arrests and the prosecutors letting them. It's the prosecutor. It's not mm -hmm. the fucking police. It's the prosecutor. Ding, ding, ding. Who is a law enforcement officer? Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. And it's um, not yeah. about money. And it's not about money either. Brandon yeah, let, let, is sitting on a ton of money, of federal money that he's not using. A ton of money. Yeah. Let's, let's ton of money. Shaggy. What, what do you think about this, Shaggy? Shaggy ain't getting in yet. Is he still on here? Is he still on here? Yeah. Okay. What's up? No, nah, I kind of, I kind of tuned out for the last few minutes, actually. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Well, Shaggy getting high. Sure. <laughs> At the same time, playing no key games. Well, also plaguing the police department is the issue of staffing. The department still remains hundreds of officers short. We are live tonight. Jeff Abel, Fox 45 News. Word, the same thing is happening the everywhere Obama else. Has brought several other high profile issues. Just yesterday, we told you about the campaign finance report showing he accepted a donation from businessman J.P. Grant. Grant is part of a company that was awarded 12 million. Yeah, I don't want to get into the, the politics, but um, um. <sighs> Declining population, increasing crime, generational poverty. For decades, Baltimore has been struggling to find solutions. This project Baltimore's Chris Papps explains one community leader believes the answer to a better future lies in the past. This is East Baltimore, the east part of East Baltimore. Pastor P.M. Smith knows his city. I've only ever lived in East Baltimore. Born here in the 1940s. That whole corner, they're drug dealers. Been here for years. Smith grew up in a Baltimore that's very different than the one he lives in today. Oh, no, they're not on my corner. One of the things is the breakdown in the family. We always have to start there. No consequences here or there. So the result is going to be what? Courts, courtrooms, right? Incarceration, right? We in trouble. When Smith was young in the 50s, most households, including his own, had two parents. The community worked together and looked out for each other's children. We never had enough money. There were six kids, but there was one message from my parents and from everybody in my community. Boy, you got to get your education. If you get your education, nobody can take it from you. Back then, Baltimore was a robust city with nearly 400,000 more residents than it has today. But while- Wow, so that means gliders, the gliders left. Those 4,000 were gliders that they might flight you. The yep. fuck about it then? Yep. Devils. It was thriving. It was also segregated. Secondhand facilities, secondhand books, secondhand furniture, but I had first class teachers. As a teenager, Smith was part of the class third parents. integrated class to attend high school at City College. That previous generation was aware of segregation and the coming of integration, and they made a decision to prepare some of us to enter those integrated schools and represent our people. Do you feel the public school system in Baltimore was better in 1950 than it is today? Absolutely. The standard there was mastery. If you didn't master the subject matter, 
between September and December. You repeated it. After grad. Damn. Yeah. That's Social a, promotion. Amer Americans, that I think that that's that's across the board in America. It's yeah. lax. The achievement and, and, and the standard of, of everything is less. Pre-social promotion that time. No more, no more merit Equity. democracy. Equity. Yeah. yeah. Equity. That's yeah. what and the parents actually accept it. If my child isn't up to the standards, then she or he should not. We don't I don't even want them to be passed on. I want them to, to actually get an education and be on par. Now, if you do that, oh, it's racist and it's only because of the, the, the curriculum that you're teaching them, blah, 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 blah. Between September and December, you repeated it. After graduation, Smith attended Coppin State and later earned a law degree from the University of Michigan. Then it's home. He returned to Baltimore. It's home. And it was almost like I was programmed to come back. This is a community, the community I grew up in, not only birthed me, but they buoyed me. They elevated me and lifted me up and they set boundaries for me. Amazing is his grace. Is that what we want to say this morning? In the mid 80s, Smith realized his life was meant for a different purpose. Come on, let's stand together. I'll call the words of Deuteronomy. He left his law career and became pastor of Huber Memorial Church in Northeast Baltimore. And both you and your future. A few years later, he opened Hope Academy. Because that's the only way you affect change. You cannot do it from the outside. You can only do it from the inside. And too many in my generation got up, got out, and did not come back. You're my only friend still in the hallway. Let's go. His goal? Uh, to so the problem is all them sellouts. Yeah, but they all still alive. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and they fucking made the right decision, man. They, they did. did. And their kids didn't get shot, and they got good <laughs> educations. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Let me go to Chicago, man. Let's P. P. M. Smith's a good brother, though. He's 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 a soldier. He is, but yeah. no, no, I ain't taking nothing from him. But yeah. uh, uh, he uh, he he salute to that brother. Yeah, and, and, he, yeah. and he ain't he ain't blaming the social the the other social justice bullshit. Yeah, everybody man. else. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to Chicago? Just yep. Tom Clancy wrote without remorse about uh, dealing with crime in uh, Baltimore. And that was like written in the eighties, about the seventies. So I mean, it's not like it's anything new. No, right. no it's not new. Yeah, right. it's, not new. it's not new. Yo, buckle no. up, Ag Nation. <laughs> we going to <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> We're going to the dark heart of Blackistan. Yeah. Yo, Put your vest on. Put your vest on. Right. Get behind the, the wrong 